several years now since Brooke, I graduated. Brooke, since this I is the greatest college. moment. Brooke, I am, you have made my <laughs> fucking life. Hey everybody, this is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and it's episode 295 of the Ask Gary V Show. And this is like, you know what I love about life? Timing. This is somebody that um, I have an enormous amount of admiration to. We're gonna go into it. We're gonna do phone calls because I think a lot of people want access to this dude. Uh, he's out and about, but getting access to him is very difficult because he's busy. So we're gonna do phone calls. Facebook, put in your phone numbers. Andy is here and he's gonna pick some calls. We'll do that we're towards live. the end. We're live. Oh, should I like put this on my social media? I'm doing this? You can do whatever the fuck you want. No, whatever, this is, whatever's this, that, good Did I mess you. up, guys? No, no, you're good. Okay. We're, 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 we, you know, unlike normal things that you do, we have enough social media power to get you exposure. Oh, this you, is good. I like Usually it. people are asking you because you have so much power. Yeah. Uh, but you can, but that's not the what we need to do. What we need to do is get some phone numbers from Facebook for the show. Scooter Braun is in the building. This is, you know, I have I have contemporaries, people that are 10 years younger and older, I would say, in the way that I use contemporaries, that I really admire. Scooter's really genuinely one of those five or six people at the top of the list, not only for his ridiculousness in accomplishing things that I admire, which is business, comma, culture, comma, the most important part, just a good human being. We've had a, we had a pretty fun ex- text exchange maybe three or four months ago of just on that of like rooting for you, rooting for you, like not a lot of people with the kind of parenting and DNA that we have, families, there's just so much I can go into. His brother is one of my dear friends. I, sat, I sit on the board of Pencils of Promise and been involved with that. But when we met for the first time ever, uh, eight or nine years ago, we're waiting outside of uh, uh, Nobu in Midtown they're not ready to seat us. We're just meeting. My brother AJ's there, which was rare for me to bring my brother to a meeting back in the day, but the reason was because Scooter and his brother were there. We're just getting to know each other. We were kind of be, we're put in touch by CAA or somebody else. We're just getting to know each other. The first thing we get into in 30 seconds is our deep love with the New York Jets, and within 19 seconds of that, Mark Sanchez, our starting quarterback, walks by us, None of, neither of us know him at the time, and we're like, did that just happen? Then we get seated next to them, it becomes this whole classic story and thus becomes a great friendship and watching what, you know, at that point you were managing Justin. Mm -hmm. um, So you'd already kind of quote unquote made it into the consciousness but nowhere to the mogul impact you're making now. I'm really glad you're here, Scooter. Thanks for being. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, And the admiration is mutual. So, you know, uh, I've watched you do these from a distance and we've joked around about, you know, me actually coming here and finding the time and, you know, I'm excited for this one because I don't think I'll ever yell back and forth on a podcast <laughs> the way we're probably about to go. Um, to your point, we've been talking about doing this for quite a while. You know, Scooter's cool, and what that means is that he FaceTimes, not calls or texts, yeah. right? He's in the culture, which if you're I cool, also like to FaceTime people to make them feel uncomfortable. A hundred percent. Like, it's, uh, like it's you have the, to, you have to like put FaceTime. I'm always like, and he's always on the West Coast, like I'm always in bed, like in bed with my wife, you know, like all this stuff, it's yeah. the best, because we eat weekends, but, What's most fun is that Scooter and I activate our friendship the most during football season. We're both yeah. diehard Jet fans. And the fact that out of all the times we could have possibly done this, it's we're doing it literally the Monday after a third loss in a row. <laughs> you know, the rose is super off the bloom on you this season. remember what I texted you on the chain? What was the last thing I texted on the chain? Because no we're in a chain with like a bunch of Jets fans. <laughs> and the last thing I texted was, this is not fun. <laughs> yes, that, it's just not. It's just not. And so, sort of real quick for the you know, knowing my audience for the three to six percent, because that's how little it is, that don't know anything about you, give me the comic book number one origin story, because I think there's there's so many things I admire about your origin story, I'll bring them up if you don't get to them, but what is the three minute version of who you are, in your words? Um, look, I was a kid who, uh, who grew up with two amazing parents. Uh, my dad was a refugee uh, from Hungary who actually grew up in Queens, my mom grew up in the Catskill Mountains, and she lost her dad when she was 11, and really, you know, made, you know, her own accomplishments um, after that. And they moved us to a suburb of New York and I grew up with, you know, amazing siblings. I have, uh, there's five of us. When I was a teenager, my parents adopted two more, so there became five of us. And I was kind of a kid who played ball. Like I played basketball growing up and I thought that's, you know, what I was gonna do. I was gonna coach or maybe become a lawyer, who knows. I knew I wasn't going to the NBA. Five foot 11 Jew, it just, it wasn't Not adding up. Um, but when I got to college, I kind of became frustrated with being broke. Um, so, you know, I started 
first selling fake IDs and then uh, quickly realized I was going to get caught. So I stopped doing that. I became a party promoter and became a very big party promoter in Atlanta, Georgia, at the height of hip hop growing in Atlanta in like 2000. Yeah, um, some of your throwback Thursday photos are so gangster. <laughs> they just are. It was that- funny, like Young Jeezy and I knew each other when he was just Young Jeezy, the drug dealer, not even the rapper. <laughs> right. And yeah, he would come to my parties and we would hang out. Um, but, you know, I kind of came up, I, I was worked uh, Throw Them Bows for Ludacris. That was the first person I worked in the clubs. This guy, Shakir Stewart, put me in the music game with Shaka Zulu, Ludacris' manager. And then Jermaine Dupri asked me to help him out. I was 20 years old. Became the vice president of So So Def, dropped out of school, young bloods. I didn't, Anthony you know Hamilton. what? I didn't know that. You dropped out of school? Dropped out of school myself. Did your parents year. shit? So for the first semester of me being dropped out, I you know, lied? Well, I lied. I actually paid for the semester so mm-hmm. they would send my parents the mail. Mm-hmm. And uh, by them getting the mail, they didn't really know I was out yeah, of school. And then they kept asking me stories, and I'd always be traveling because I was using, at the time, uh, AirTran, which was this airline that mm-hmm. went under, God. but it was out of Atlanta. They had something Did called. Did it go under because a plane crashed? I don't even know why. But I think I, it was, by but, the way. I remember AirTran. Well, they, Big shout out to Moose, my homie, who <laughs> was my boy, lived in Alpharetta after college. You, you did AirTran? Dude, we would go to Vegas for a weekend and like he'd get there for $4. Well, this is the thing. Anyone with like, a college you? ID, just because this is pre-9-11, so it wasn't even ID. It was just a college ID. Could go anywhere on AirTran if there was an available seat for 49 bucks. That's what he did. And I would fly all around the country working, building relationships for $49 a ticket. And I would throw my parties and then, you know, throw parties in Miami and here. And I was traveling all around the country on AirTran for $49. And that gave me an opportunity to get places. When you were throwing parties, I mean, this is just me now getting fun and excited and curious. On the, there's only two deltas. On the delta of business and on the delta of like hooking up and having fun. What were you at that point when you Pure were- business. A hundred. hundred. I kind of thought that's what you were going to yeah. say. That's why I asked. Yeah, I was a hundred percent. I actually fully believe that. Yeah, I was a hundred percent. My thing was- did I have fun? Was I single? Did I meet girls? Yes, but never the ones at my parties. If I was going to meet women, it was on the days where I wasn't throwing parties and I was going out. If you were coming to my parties, I wasn't. Gonna you get were working. It. I was working and I wasn't getting caught up. I didn't even drink. Maybe I'd do a shot here and there, but I was there to make money and run a business and I had no interest. And I always used to say the guys who are trying to get laid off of being a party promoter, they're going to lose to me because they're too busy. Percent. They're too busy focused Chasing. on the wrong thing. That's right. Um, and we built a massive party business. We were the highest college promotion company in the country revenue wise and we expanded all over the place and then started helping Jermaine doing all that and then when I was 24 I had all these ideas about social media because Facebook had come and you know I I had all these ideas and Jermaine wasn't really listening to me on them Um, and I got great advice from my dad where he said look as long as you work for someone else you can give your ideas but it's their company if you want to go for it go for it that's right and then little John uh, was who just produced yeah for Usher he and I were out together and he said, look, I worked for Jermaine for seven years as an A&R. Don't take seven years. He's a great guy, but you got to go after your own. And um, long story, but I ended up leaving. Not by choice, actually. We'll get into that later. Interesting. But it was it was more me wanting to leave and not, not. doing it because I was afraid. I get and it. And then the universe corrected that for me. How? Um, something happened in the office where... You know, basically me and Jermaine's mom got into it on something <laughs> stupid. Yep. And the next day I come in and she had fired me. And yep. Jermaine's like, well, just give it two weeks and I'll fix it. And that was enough for me to be like, I'm this out. is not the career that I yeah. want. And she gave me the out and now I got to go for it. And I started my own management and record label. Um, signed a kid off MySpace named Asher Roth. We had a big record call. He I had Love a devastating College. loss this, uh, yeah, this weekend. Yeah, He's I a big 49ers fan. Big they lost Niners by one. And um, four months after that, I was online, middle of the night. Looking at little boys sing because that's what that's what how you find success. You go on the internet in the middle of the night and watch little boys singing. Um, don't do that. That's a joke. Uh, <laughs> but you know what's interesting to me, and I don't know where I picked this up through our travels through the years, but there was a part of you. You know, it's funny, and I, I think of Troy Carter and things of that nature. Like I'm so fat. Like there was definitely a part of you that was strategic. Of like, you know. The hip hop industry has a lot of vulnerabilities on the talent and just a million different things and just raw numbers of how many albums sell. Like you weren't just doing that for kicks and giggles. There was a thought process of a pop star of and you also Scooter, is this right? I don't know I remember this vividly from literally I think our first dinner like a decade ago. Didn't you try to put together a boy band like when at some point as well? Well I I tried I tried to find holes in the marketplace and what I did was try not a boy band, I put together a group 
and it Didn't failed. they live in your house or something? Yeah, they lived in my house. They ended up robbing the apartment complex that I put them in. And it was like, you know, it was like, I tried a couple different things. I, I put together another group and then they actually went to jail for bank robbery that I didn't know they were robbing federal banks. Like, that's a real thing. I got investigated by the FBI. Like, it was pretty wild. Um, but like, did all those experiences take you to like, I need like a nine year old child? <laughs> no, it, what it took me to was someone saying, you're trying to sign everything that you think we want instead of what you want. Interesting. And you know, this guy, Jerry Smokin' B, who at the time was the program director of Hot 97 Atlanta, mm -hmm. he said, you're really talented. Stop trying to sign everything that you think we want. Sign what you want and what you think is good. And I looked in the marketplace and I said, what's the opening? And with Asher, I was like, you know, the time Eminem was the only white rapper. Right. And I said, here's this kid who can really spit but also isn't trying to be anything he isn't. And there's a lot of kids who go to hip hop shows who look like him and relate to him. And that's why I did that. Sense. And with Justin, I said- Who I'm wrote huge... the college song? He did. He did. And with Justin, uh, you know, I looked at it and I said, one, Shaka Zulu said, if, Ludacris' manager, he said, you're lucky if you get one big star your whole career, one breakthrough. People can live off that forever. I said, well, I'm gonna break two right away, if that's the case. And with Justin, I said, I'm a big Michael Jackson fan. And Michael used to sing these angelic love songs in the Jackson 5. And his voice reminded you of when you were a kid before you were jaded by love. Mm -hmm. So you believe in the love story. And when I saw Justin, I was like, this is the kid I've been looking for. And I found him, brought Scooter, him in, signed Justin. With no bullshit. Like, I'm just dying to know. You may not remember, but I'm dying to know this because I don't know it. How many views was he getting on his 60, YouTube? 60,000. About 60,000, yeah. which was at the time a lot, but nothing compared to what it is it was, now. It was like, okay, some people, people are paying attention, but you know, at the time, like, you know, people gave a fuck and you, if you had a million. That was, yeah. A million was like was a breakthrough. It, got it. And it was our like 20th video where we got our first a million, but all the videos we had accumulated up until that suddenly became How many like videos did he have that you were able to look at? Four, four at, to six, I think. And you emailed him through YouTube? Well, I tried, I tried everything, but his mom had a different last name than him. And I tried everything and then I Googled the companies in the back of the image and I found out they were a part of Ontario. And I called every school board in that part of Ontario until I found him. And then his mom called to get rid of me because she thought I was a stalker. And after 45 minutes of speaking to me, she agreed to get on the first plane ride either of them had ever been on. And we've been together ever since. I love it. It's insane. Okay, cool. So that you were, that that's, who, that's like your, I mean, that's the nutshell, That's right? the origin and then we went on and things went well and I really focused on that for four years and then someone who I respected took a shot at me and said, oh, he's good, but he only has that. And I got pissed, so I said, okay, well, I'm gonna sign things that I can break quickly. So I signed, you know, The Wanted with Glad You Came, I signed Gangnam Style, I signed, I remember. you know, uh, Carly Rae Jepsen would Call Me Maybe. By the way, my most fun story that I, Scooter doesn't know this, I, I went over Scooter's uh, house in LA and just on a friend visit and I was just there for a night flying back the next morning text him he's like come over I came over and uh he's like hey man I want you to listen to this song and I'm like I don't I'm not from the new music industry that's not my norm Boyd and I do some fun stuff in hip hop these days but like I I don't this might be the f third time in my life I ever heard a song before anybody else and he plays Call Me Maybe, and I'm like, man, that's super fucking catchy but like I thought I was just doing that because I don't even know but to watch that's like Man, that is so fun. I did it with like startups. I do it with wine. I do it with other things. But like music is so deeply cultural and that was such a smash hit song. Like that was the song of the year. To like hear it in your backyard that night and then like two months later, you know, hear it every single place ever. That's a, that's a fun part of your game. Mm -hmm. no, it, it, Justin heard her on the radio in Canada. What was Justin, it again? Justin heard her on the radio in Canada. His friend told him it was number 36 on the Canadian chart. And then he came back and played it and I said, this is really good. And I looked into it and the labels in the US had passed. And I said, oh, this is not, this is, a, so I went and I signed it for the worldwide outside of Canada. And we ended up selling 26 million copies or something. That was huge. And, uh, and then Gangnam Style and then. <laughs> that was the best. Yeah, and then, and, then, and then it was, then we signed Ariana and Martin Garrix and, you know, we just kept going and then we bought other management companies and we just expanded and I'm always on this mentality, you and I have talked about it, that out of everything that's happened from TV to film, all these different things, I just assume it's gonna end tomorrow at all times. So you're squeezing the fuck out of it? Not even squeezing the fuck out of it, just never letting it be overwhelming in a way of thinking I did it. Like I, I'm, we can argue about this, I actually don't know how you feel about this. I just, I just think anyone who says that luck doesn't play a part in their success is naive. I think it's completely predicated on how you define luck. Like, like I think, like, I think, 
so much is not in my control. And so I, that, that's how I think about it, right? Like luck is an interesting word. I think the way one uses it, but much like the person said, he's good, but he's only got one thing. To me, I was traded for wheat. Like I was born in the Soviet Union during the height of the Cold War mm-hmm. and nobody in my country, let's get it very simple here, nobody in my country had left that country for 40 years. You couldn't leave. They didn't let you leave. That's what the Soviet Union was. And I got to leave as a three-year-old baby Which is because 400,000 Jews got traded for wheat because Russia needed some wheat and America and Israel teamed up. Like To me, that is the most lucky thing but to me, it all depends on how you look at, like but most think, of our lives are not, like you could get hit by a truck tomorrow. No, 100%, um, but, I, but I, I look at it as a fact of like, I think if you acknowledge that luck, you don't get, you don't lose it. See, you know, I think I, where I you're think, going, and I agree with you completely, is like getting high on your own, like thinking, like. Can't get high on your own supply. Couldn't believe it more. That's exactly <laughs> where I was going. Look, I think the thing you and I will both agree with, because I know your family well enough to know this, we are disproportionately, you started your, I'm the product of two wonderful parents is your opening line. Mm-hmm. Everybody on my team here watching, I'm sure took note of that because that's all I talk about. Like I'm the product of my parents in well, such a big way. I don't think way. the American dream, I think, you know, as we're kids, we were told about this American dream and I think people think it's you come here and you live it. I don't think that's what it is. I think the American dream is you come here and you ha- give your kids an opportunity to live it. I mean, your parents came here, you're living the American dream. My parents came here, I'm living the American dream. And that is a reflection of the sacrifices made by them to give us that opportunity. And then obviously the way we think about our grandparents and things like that, yeah. it, gets so, it gets so intense. Look, I think where you're going really matters, which is literally, I genuinely believe this. It's an interesting conversation. For me, the biggest thing though, is I just don't think anything I did yesterday matters anymore. I really am big on you're only as good as your last at bat and I'm glad that I have some sort of resume but like if I start fucking up tomorrow, it gets washed. Okay, so this is where it's gonna get fun for people because I'm gonna push you on that. Go ahead. I think where we're always gonna end up is agreeing but I just wanna push you on that. Go ahead, go ahead. So I agree with you, especially in this world that the judgment on us is you're only as good as your last at bat. And I think to remain successful, you have to have a little, you have to have that mentality. Yep. Otherwise you get complacent and complacency kills. Yep. But the other side of that is if you're constantly trying to outdo and outdo and outdo yourself and you don't acknowledge yesterday, you can go into a very, very dark place and feel like you're not enough ever. You know, it's interesting. You, you, so this is gonna be super, you're right, this is gonna be fun. I don't know if I've ever thought about outdoing myself. I think I just love it so much that I want to be able to have the permission to continue to play. You're a very unique soul. And I think the problem, <laughs> that's the truth. Because you, and, and, and you know, I, we can get into whether you deal with depression or I don't know, but I think a lot of people I've met, they get into this place, even with Gangnam Style, right? I remember when I did that. Here I am, I'm taking this guy who is my brother now. Me and, me and Sai have this thing, we, we joke around, we actually say this to each other. Instead of just saying I love you, we say love you, fuck you. Like that's like a joke. <laughs> it's a joke between us. But um, Where is he living right now? He lives in Korea and he goes back and forth to Beijing and he does a bunch of stuff between the two. And But Sai is great. But the difference is, is like, Sai was like, I have to do it again. I have to do it again. People were like, oh, you guys are, you know, that was, it was good. But like, can you do it again? And actually, Gentleman went number three, which was I the remember, next one. Right. But the funny thing is, I never sought out to do it again. I had a slightly overweight Korean man dancing and singing in Korean, fully in Korean. And he's in his 40s. And he's coming to the United States. I wanted to get that to be number one in the United States and around the world. We did that. It stayed there for multiple weeks. That was the impossible. And that's what people do. That You achieve the impossible and they go, oh, that was cool, but can you do this? And I think if you start to get in that mold of, of the expectations of others and what they want, you miss the point that you already achieved greatness. I understand. And, and you have to live in that too. So I understand what you're saying. I think the problem with me and Gary is we always say the same thing, but we say it in completely different ways. <laughs> <laughs> look, I think. Look, I think there's. You know, I have. I only think I admire you so much because of our similarities. Because I love myself so much. <laughs> I'm not. I mean, like, I really. You know, look. We. Have, wait, we you have, play. You play a large part in how I got back in shape, though. I, I actually want to give you love to that because I'm gonna live years longer for my boys and my daughter because of you. Because I watched Gary hire a trainer 24/7, and I was like, you know what? I'm in a place financially where I can do that. 
That makes so much sense. And I need to kickstart myself. So I hired a trainer to stay with me for 30 straight days, day in and day out. Dude, there was some photo you posted on Instagram where I was like, fuck. Like, you got into shape quickly and like, like when you do the right things, but man, you had some real fucking muscles in one photo. I was like, fuck, that's a lot of muscles. <laughs> I, I, you know what, I got Irv's DNA. Yeah. I got, my, yeah. my dad is six, 64, has a six pack. He's like 200 pounds, six foot two. He's a big dude. And I got his DNA, so I was able to like, my friend Eugene, who I have Rumble yep. with, he was yeah. giving me shit. He was like, I work out like you. Why is this not happening? Yeah. And I was like, you know, I have friends who it doesn't happen for me the way it happens for them. I was excited to see you guys do, you know, you guys went into a pretty significant partnership, right? Cause he's yeah, Rumble. Re he's really, I, have, I like him a lot. He's a great guy like and him. I'm really excited for what we're Did you know him in the catch days and even before yes. that, the promoter days? Yeah. When, so you've known him a long time. 10 June. Scooter, what is it? What is it? Let me go, go completely left field on the back of that Eugene comment. You... So you and I are different in one way. You uh, have been in the scene, you've grown up in the scene and grew in the scene, meaning I did something very weird. I literally worked in a liquor store in New Jersey, never went to Manhattan, LA, Atlanta, anywhere, literally for 14, until I was like 34, 35 years old. I've been fascinated with, I, I keep bringing up these throwback you know, kind of things because much like Eugene as well, I, I, I was like, oh, it, not that I envy, I, I was like, oh, it would've been cool to come up with all these people and like see everybody. Like I came out of left field kind of in a lot of ways into it. What does it feel like to, how do you look at things like Eugene and others when you see a lot of people that you came up with, some accelerated, some fell off, some did better than you thought in your own like fun game. Like what does it feel like to be part of a scene and culture for two decades but still be so young where you know there's another three, four, five chapters. I'm sure you look at some of your friends who are 38 and say wow, she's gonna be the governor of California one day, that one's gonna be the this. Like, How does it feel to be part of the zeitgeist? That's the way I would put it. Um, look, it's cool because, you know, there's history with certain people and you're rooting for each other and you yeah. kind of come up and, you know, there's, there's respect because you know, they grind it, you know, that they grind it yeah. and, you, and you know, that's that, what I like. And you know, the mentality like Eugene is like me has never been someone to party at his own parties. Yep. He was, he was Working. a worker from day one and, you know, a Russian immigrant who mm -hmm. like, you know, made it happen mm -hmm. and came to the city and saw the opportunity and grinded it out. Wait, he was like in Ohio or something like that? No, he was just coming into the city. But it, we, do you know where he was, I don't remember? Okay, go uh, ahead. I think he, he grew up around here. Got it. Keep and then, um, and, and you know, I think for me, that's really great, but at the, at the same time, I also, I also get upset when I see certain people from that scene who they find resentment in that. You know, and and I just because I they didn't make it as big, and they were ahead of other sometimes people. Sometimes it's they they were ahead and didn't make it as big. Other times they are making it big, but they have the they've made the mistake of thinking that. And I and I see it with people I've known, see people I don't know. They make the mistake of thinking success is some kind of zero sum game. Yeah, I'm blown away by people's inability to understand the abundance. Yeah, like I just I'm shocked by that. I, well, I've never understood it because I... I it's not practical. I, I, it's not practical. And I think the way I figured out how to explain it makes it easier for people to understand because we grow up in a world where we think that if if I'm winning, someone else should be losing or if I'm losing, someone else is winning. And that's why people get into that mode. And what I like to explain is I call it the vacation theory where if I'm successful and none of my friends are successful, I have to pay for them to go on vacation with me. <laughs> No one, I don't want to pay for your vacation. My goal in life is to have all of my friends become successful so that they also can pay for the nice vacation and it isn't all on me financially. So if you think of it that way, you know, because I think a lot of people, they kind of look into it like, I want to be the one who makes it. No, you want everyone to make it. And the other thing I'll say is whenever I talk to powerful people and I had the pleasure day of sitting with a mentor of mine today who's had an incredible career, he's one of my favorite people in the world. And when he talks about other super powerful people, he talks about 30, 40, 50 years of history. And what I think the beautiful part about that is people make this, this idea that I gotta get to this person. You know, they think they gotta get to you. They think they gotta get to me. You wanna know who you gotta get to? They're sitting next to you in the living room dreaming just like you. You know, they are, the, they are your peers. If, they, if you come up, anyone who's powerful, their network is more powerful than their money. Always. They can say, oh, who do you need? I've known them for 20 years, let me make a phone call. It's coming up that grind. Me and Eugene, we went into this business together because we knew each other from the grind. Yeah, of course. You know, I can call, 
you know, when I needed Ludacris on Baby back in the day for Justin's first single that would give him some credibility, it was because Ludacris and I came up with Throw Them Bows in a nightclub. You know, so for me, it's not about the person you aspire to know. You should go to them for stories, you know, get some wisdom. But if you want to know who you need to network with, network with your peers and help each other rise up. And that's where power comes from. Let me ask you a question. What do you think you're dramatically better at? Like as a dude, as a human, what do you think you're way better at today than even just five years ago? Like Watching is, the Jets lose. <laughs> I'm, I'm, We're much, very good I'm at much better at it now I'm than I was five no, years ago. Because, because I think what's super interesting about my, I don't even know why I'm, I'm intuitively asking this because Again, listen, we have a, we're so busy, we don't get to spend that much time together. I think- I know I, the answer. You know the answer to I know question? the answer because I had to go to a very dark place to find it. Tell me, because I'm really curious. I, so you know a lot, a lot about me and my family. Yep. So um, two years ago, I lost one of the most important people in my life, which was my grandmother. Um, and she was one of the most special human beings anyone's ever met. Um, and everyone who knew her loved her. And she was a Auschwitz Holocaust survivor. So she saw the worst of humanity, but literally was the light in every room she went into. And everyone called her Ma. Um, when she passed away, my brother 11 hours later had twins. And nine days later, I had my second son. So now I got a wife with a 20 month, 21 month old baby and a newborn. She's breastfeeding. I got a dad who's broken because both his parents are gone. And I'm trying to be the rock for the whole family. And I didn't have time for grieving. So I went into, you know, I started going into a depression, which I wasn't used to. You know, I'd gone to different dark places in the past, but I couldn't shake this one. I couldn't sleep it off. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't get away from it. And I started to get even more depressed because no one was asking me if I was okay. Because I've been the rock for all of my friends and my family my entire life. I'm always okay. I'm always the mature one. You know, I have fun, I go crazy, but I was always the one that you didn't have to worry about. And I'm always the one who goes and fixes everyone else's problem. And finally, a friend of mine I opened up to and he said, you need to talk to your wife about it too. And I went and talked to my wife and I expected her to be like, baby, we can get through anything. Like, and instead she looked at me and she goes, you can always talk to me about anything. I love you, but this is your fault. Yeah, you made the bed. And I said, well, I'm that person in my life. And I said, what are you I talking about? She goes, you always fix everyone else's problems, but you don't stay long enough to let them know your insecurities, your vulnerabilities and who you are. So you think you're connected to all these people, but they don't feel connected to you. They just trust you can help them out. Yeah. And I decided as a New Year's resolution that I would take time to engage and show people who I was so that they could be there for me in dark times. It's, you know, and and I am much better about that now, taking time out of my busy schedule to say stop and speak to people and engage with them and let them know that I've been through those moments. And my life is more fulfilling now. I have more genuine friendships now that I didn't even know weren't genuine. Hmm. Um, and, you know, that's actually why I even take the time to do stuff like this, because I want to get that message out there. I want people to know vulnerability is strength. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people, they think they got to be so tough all the time because it, it's weak if you show you, you're scared. You, you know what's funny? And, and that's not did weakness. You, did you think it was weakness or, I'm asking you this because this is where we have a huge similarity. For me, it comes so natural. To help people? Yeah. No, 100%. It, you know, I have so much optimism and happiness and emotional strength that it, it, whether it's a subconscious guilt, whether it's just appeases me, whether it's control. Like I know I do a lot of things emotionally because it's the leverage. Mm -hmm. I can feel it in me if I'm self-evaluating. Like it's there's a, an abundance of emotional strength that- Which we get from our parents. A hundred thousand percent. hundred percent. Like the reason I do it is because I have it to give and when I'm surrounded by family members, business people, friends, acquaintances, like, I'm, like I wanna be there, I wanna do it. Like Boyd's in the room right now. Like I had so much fun on a late Friday night calling him at 11.30 p.m. and giving him a piece of advice, like that made me happy because I had it to give, but to your point, like there's no question, like the, in the back of my mind, see, it's funny that you gave that answer. I had the great misfortune of losing all my grandparents except for one before I was born. So basically the only fucking thing I give a fuck about is like 11 or 12 people and as long as they're healthy and here, I'm good. It's interesting, I have still, I'm 42 years old, soon to be 43, I'm widely aware that in my uniqueness of always being happy, that the domino that's most vulnerable is something happening to one of those eight or nine, 10 people. And I'm, I sit here at 43 and I'm like, for all the who I am and I'm a wild character and I'm a unique dude, I'm like, yeah, but guess what? The kryptonite hasn't happened. 
My mom isn't terminally, terminally ill. My, my dog, I mean, you know, I have kids. I mean, the kids one, if you wanna talk about, like, when you're, when you're a family guy or gal, you always talk about, like, the greatest, especially, like, in our culture, yeah. I think, the greatest fear ever is, like, losing Your a kid. child. Like, I couldn't even, like, yeah, you wanna talk about knocking on woods? Like, like I'm just like, will that put me into, like, am I gonna be, like, Luke Skywalker and like, the new movies and go into a cave forever? I think I probably would. Because <laughs> I don't think that wouldn't be an, inappropriate. I'm like, that's, you know, so... But let me ask That's you this. I, I just want to. Yeah, I want to test this. Go and ahead. I, and I don't know what's going to happen. He called you the other night at eleven thirty. And be honest. Yeah, be honest. And he, Boyd will be. Boyd, he obviously knows you and can help you out. But do you honestly feel you know him? Yeah. And it and why? Well, I've been around Gary since two thousand nine, so I've seen him grow and mature and to change and get into fitness. And, and but has he opened up to you about his fears and stuff? So my thing is, I thought my friends would say, yeah, I know him. But when I needed help, they didn't even know that was something that was, that made sense. Can I ask you a great question? This is super fun. This is super interesting content. Did you even know what it felt like? Like, like it's cool. Like I could tell Boyd, like uh, for example, like, and Boyd might be able to answer, the only thing I ever talk about from a fear standpoint is losing or the health and well being of everyone else. Do you think that you would have even known that you were capable of going to that place consistently? It's funny, you said something, dude, I'm so weirded out by some of our, like uh, again, I think I want the audience to know this. Scoot and I have had this incredibly interesting relationship. I compare it, in a funny way, I've never said this to him, of like relationships I have with my family members who I take most for granted because we're almost playing on the same mental wavelength. Like, you would probably be stunned how little time Scooter and I have actually spent <laughs> together over the last decade because it's just the way we roll, but there is this deep kinship. The fact that you said sleep it off, it is insane to me that basically when the worst business things or life things that have happened to me outside, which I would deem as not that. You gotta shut this off, the only way to sleep at all. I just go to sleep and the next morning I'm like, let's win. Like like, I remember when I lost Texas, there's a business thing. We lost the ability to ship to Texas, which was crippling for Wine Library and we were the only company that was picked on by FedEx to not ship to Texas and it was a lot of, it was $4 million, we were a small business and like literally it was like, this is dangerous shit. I went home at 3.30 in the afternoon, went to sleep, woke up the next day and just started chopping wood and like fixed it. That's where I am. I, and I kind of picked up on that because it was very subtle the way you said it. <laughs> so I understand what it's, I don't know if, let me ask you a question. Had you ever been able to sustain being depressed or upset? Not like, and when I lost For how my, long, prior to, to Ma? My, my grandmother. Yeah, prior like, to Ma. Prior to Ma, like there might be a think? couple days of like being in your own head, yeah. stuff like so that. Like to me, I've never been able to be in a full 24 hour cycle of true depression. Like, no, 100%, like yeah. it kind of goes back and forth. When that happened, it went really, really bad. And what was shocking wasn't the depression. What was shocking was he says he knows you, but because he's never seen you like that, the shocking part was that people didn't know to ask me if I was okay. They didn't know to say, they didn't even comprehend the idea that I could be broken. I get it, man, brother, and, I fucking get it. And when I admitted that, I, I had to ask myself, why is that? And that was on me, that's what my wife taught she's, me. She's 100% and, and I right. didn't express my fears, I didn't express my vulnerabilities, so they didn't know what to look for, they didn't know to be there. And I feel like a lot of people, like, I was like, well, why? of course they should know. Like, I've been so, I've been in really important moments in these people's lives, like I've been there for so many different people, but I realized I never took the time to say, because I'm like you, I'm energy, I'm gone, I'm this, that. I fix it, time to go back. Next thing you know, Superman, there I can hear everything going on, let's go. And Omnipresent. Yeah, and, and, and the bottom line is, what I had to teach myself, which I'm better at, going back to your original question, is to say, yes, I could do 40 more things today, but I'm not. I'm gonna stay right here, and I'm gonna get deep with this person, and I'm going to engage in a way I normally don't do. Interesting, I fully understand. And that is something that has made me happier because it actually hasn't slowed down any of my success. It hasn't slowed down any of my progress. And what it has done is made me go with more joy into the next day, more ready to fight because I feel like I had a genuine moment that day that I didn't even realize I was missing two, two or three years before. Yeah, because the speed in which you're going, you just it's, it's a width game, not a depth game. Yep. Yeah, man, I super get it. I super understood that. And you happy with some questions? I'm sure people wanna do some questions. Let's, let's do a quick question and we'll keep bouncing. Because I have some other contemporary questions. We've gone deep here a little bit, which I appreciate. Um, no, it's super interesting. I super get it. It's funny. I'm sitting here. A lot of the vulnerabilities the that I've created in the two companies that I've run, Wine Library and Vayner, 
the vulnerabilities are I created entitlement because I put so much on me. Like I have the same thing. My staff is about to hear this, so they're gonna never play ping pong again. But I've been getting very frustrated. We have a very we have a ping pong table in the middle of you know the office, and I keep seeing all the young people like playing ping pong, and I'm like, what the fit? You know, how are you able to play ping pong if I'm killing myself? And you know, I always had this rule where I was like, if if you can't say you work harder than me, you can't complain, and no one ever fucking complains except Allison, who probably is the only person who works harder than me. She's been with me for a decade, and. I mean, Allison had a child and was on email two hours later. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, Allison, get off email. And she goes, it's boring here. Like she, she's an animal. <laughs> but, um, I but you know, I just, I can't understand, especially when you're that age. Hello. Why Who's you want to grind 24 seven. What's that? Max. Max. Maxon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Max works, Gary. Maxon works too, brother. Maxon, you're on with uh, Scooter Braun. How are you? Oh my God. I'm good. How are you? Good. What's your question? Yeah, I was coming with a question. Uh, my brother, he is uh, an EDM producer. Uh, he's been doing it for about four or five years, and I help him sometimes. And my question is, is that he does a lot of local shows. He lives down in New Mexico, and I live in Vermont, so we do mostly FaceTime. Um, but he does a lot of local First of all, shows. hold on, real quick, Max, and I'm just very excited about this. Like, the fact that you're in Vermont and he's in New Mexico is just the greatest part of this story, because... I don't know how many people have the Mexico, New Mexico, Vermont relationship. I think it's rare. I think there's a very small amount of people that the connection is Vermont and New Mexico, and I think you need to think about how rare that is and maybe monetize it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, All right, I, keep going. Definitely that's a, it's a rare combo. Um, very. Yeah, so he does a lot of local shows and he has SoundCloud, but I guess my thought is is that obviously he'll send out his song to different independent labels and he's had some singles with it for like one-time releases. What some uh, advice maybe you would offer Scooter or Gary on what he can maybe do to get attention for different A&R uh, contacts or people at labels beyond like social media. I mean, social media is very important. I know that, and, and, just some other ideas. And Max, real quick before Scooter answers, is the goal to get signed? Like what, what's the, I think the goal is the most important question. Yeah, definitely the goal would be to get signed. Um, he's a senior at college now and he has a friend who's, been doing it with him since high school and he's a junior i know he's working contacts he's studying abroad in amsterdam okay. so he's been working with different leads in there too okay um, um i'm ready yeah. i'm ready to answer buddy okay yeah um i disagree with your goal and it's okay and it's and it's against uh against you know me being able to sign artists but i just think it, you know with this equalizer we call the internet and the fact that you now have spotify saying they'll do direct deals with artists and, you know, we have this platform, especially in a genre like EDM, where albums are very insignificant and it's all about mm -hmm. singles and, and mostly touring. You know, I don't know why you would want to get signed. I think, you know, what you should be doing is focusing on building a fan base, not worrying about getting to an executive and, you know, pushing out the music through SoundCloud, pushing the music, you know, as far as you possibly can and building up a base, building up a proper brand for yourself and let the labels chase you, let the A&Rs chase you, you shouldn't be chasing them, especially in, in a time where it's never been more advantageous to be independent with the resources at your fingertips. I, I, I just think you guys are focused on the wrong thing and that's probably why you haven't found success yet. I think once you go guys- sort of, Oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I, I just think once you focus on building the brand properly and just getting to the consumer and getting to the fans, I think you'll, you'll start to see success coming your way and not worry about how do we get the attention of some A&R. Okay, so sort of if you build it, they'll come. Kind of. You know. I mean, look, I, I mean, look. These guys are all scared, trying to hold on to their jobs, and they're not interested in taking risks like they used to. They're just trying to chase the momentum. So the other thing is, I think once you get the momentum, you won't be calling Gary V or myself back and saying, "Hey, what deal do we take?" You'll be saying, "I don't really want to take a deal. I like my economics better now, but on my own." Yeah, no, I, I definitely can see that. Max, I want to paint a picture for you. You literally just called and said, "Yo, how? What kind of?" you know, VHS video store should I open up? Like, I wanna build the next blockbuster, literally in the face of Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime and the golden era of OTT. That is literally no joke, in my opinion, what it's like to be thinking about, I disproportionately am passionate about getting signed in the moment of the, I literally would rather, uh, you know, you have your brother's song be distributed on the, in the background of a vlogger that's crushing YouTube 
YouTube right now than you getting discovered. I, I, can I, I also, can I also add to this to just tell you, I think a lot of artists, DJ, they want to get to me, right? Because of my career. I would even say at 37, I'm afraid I'm becoming a dinosaur. Like, I, I, you know, this technology has disrupted music so many times and the resources are so there. I got kids now, I got, you know, a hundred different businesses. You know, the way I built an artist was because that artist was 24 seven, my sole purpose. And I think that the resources I have now can take an artist from stage A to G, you know, we'll skip all the other letters because I have the network, but I can't do it without someone getting to step A. And, mm -hmm. you know, step A is, is, is really breaking it themselves and having that passion. And if you guys are talking about this and you're calling in from Vermont when he's in New Mexico, it means that you got a lot of passion for your brother. And I would use that passion because you don't have to be next to him. I mean, when I was doing Justin, he was in Canada half the time and I was doing it from Atlanta. I mean, the resources, mm -hmm. are there, the resources are there for you. Give it to the people, build it with them, and then you'll be having a very, very different discussion the next time you call. Max, okay, I definitely respect that. Max, and listen, I'm telling you this, and this is gonna help a lot of people. The biggest vulnerability I see across the board in everything, in culture, business, life, is people are putting something on a pedestal that was yesterday without understanding what's gonna happen tomorrow. This has happened already. The leverage mm -hmm. has swung to the artist because distribution is controlled by the internet. Scooter's giving you tremendous advice in lieu of what he actually does for a living in the same way that I tell big brands every day, don't hire agencies, even though that's what I do for mm -hmm. a living. Like, and the reason we're doing that is because first, we create other opportunities for ourselves because we're always hedging against the vulnerability of our current state, but second, because being historically correct is always going to be the value prop, there is absolutely no reason to pander to getting signed. You need to get the audience to love you. You need to get the music distributed and out there. And by the way, if this was 20, 30 years ago, you'd be saying, how do I get it distributed? I'm pretty sure you know how to do that on a worldwide yeah, level. Yeah, no, that's definitely, you know, that's definitely something we do. Um, yeah, it had some good run on Spotify. That song it went like 50,000 plays. So but the, huge, but, the, but, you know, no, but the, the answer is more, right? Like the thing I tell, like Boyd, having Boyd in the room, I meet with a lot of emerging hip hop artists because I like it. Boyd likes it. It's fun, but I always tell them more fucking music, please. Like, like you're one fucking song away. Like the preciousness, the overproducing. Go ahead, Scoot. Here's what I'll say also. I, I like the it. video you did with Kyle, Gary. Yeah, and that was one of the early ones, right? And like the, it's just, I just don't understand how people don't understand an unbelievable part of this is more. I think it's more, mm -hmm. and I also think if you're, I think part of your question, because I want to give you a proper answer also, you're saying, how do I network with these people? Let's talk about who you should network with. You said you have okay, 50, 50 that's great. You, you said you have 50,000 plays on Spotify. Figure out for who runs the, songs, yeah. okay, listen, figure out who runs playlists on Spotify for the genre you're in and do whatever the fucking it takes to get to that person and make them believe in what you believe in. And that's who you should be focused on. That's who the label's gonna call. Focus 100%. on that person. Wow, like, okay, that's smart. Of course it's smart. Who the fuck do you think you're ticking to? Fucking Scooter for <laughs> all, baby. True. True. <laughs> awesome, man, good luck. All right, let's go to the next question. That's exactly right. Like, like, you know, I was working on something fun. I never got to tell you about it because something happened. Nonetheless, very simply, I knew more about rap caviar in 48 seconds <laughs> than you know coming from zero because it's just not complicated. People, I think the thing that you understand, the thing that I definitely understand, it's what Vince McMahon understands, it's what Walt Disney understands. It's like understanding where the consumer's attention is and how that's controlled is everything. Who's this? Jefferson, it's Gary Vaynerchuk. You're on the Ask Gary V Show with Scooter Braun. Wow, this is this is great. <laughs> well, listen, I, I I could tell in your voice how pumped hey, you are. Jefferson, I totally get it. Jefferson, I just yeah, want to let you know, Jefferson, my, this is great for me too. Well, all right, so, Jefferson, real um, quick before you go any further, it's a very inside joke for Jets fans. You literally sound like Jeff Fisher calling the Jets <laughs> game yesterday, which was pretty classic. So, nonetheless, Jefferson, what's your question? <laughs> So my question is, um, grown, uh, I came from a different country, yep. um, just like you, you, yep. you know. Um, and which I had which a, country? Like, uh, Guatemala. Very nice, keep going. Okay. Which, by the way, um, I apologize, but I have to say it. What's so amazing about you calling for Guatemala is we referenced earlier in this podcast, I, I sit on Pencils of Promises board, and one of the core countries that we build schools in is Guatemala. in Guatemala, so big shout out to Pop. Keep wow. going. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, in high school, um, after graduation, um, I really wanted to go to school, 
But after that, um, I saw, you know, like changes changing, like social media. So um, one of your uh, videos popped up and said that, you know, get get rid of the people that don't really, um, like, help you. <laughs> um, so I did. And um, now, you know, I don't get, like, invited out to, like, you know, Friday night bars, Saturday night uh, bars and stuff like that. So... Um, so well, what, what, did you th- what did you think you were gonna, was going to happen when you tell your friends, go fuck <laughs> no, themselves? No, no, no. So, so, so that's, that's perfectly fine with me because um, just like you, I'm, I'm a big like family guy, you know? Okay. Um, so um, my question is now is how do I find um, like-minded like people? those friends yeah. that, yep. that I can work with? Yep. Um, so, so let me ask you a question. What do you want to do for a living or what are some of your interests? Okay, so my dad is a uh, contractor. Okay. Yep. Yep. So what I so what I did with him is that we build a uh, LLC company. Okay. Okay. So um, my dream is to build him um, his dream house. That's amazing, brother. You know, at the end, you know. Yeah. So hey, can I ask ahead. a question? Go, do, do you want to be in the contracting business, or is that just a dream? Like, what is the what is the goal for you? in building a business, like what do you want to do? I know you want to, the, the, the goal is to build your dad a house, but how do you want to get there? What is the business you want to create? Okay, so I saw what we're um, really good at, and um, my dad does like a lot of like uh, custom works, um, and his customer service is like uh, like amazing, like not like any other uh, contract with business there. So um, I, I want to, um, you know, help him become bigger um, for by, him to hire other by, people. By, you and, you want, and you want to do that by bringing marketing to the business or being another pair of hands that can do craft? How are you thinking about that? So um, I got into um, like social media on like Facebook advertisement, Instagram uh, advertisement. Um, and I, I did get some, uh, some, some clients from there, but... Um, I want to know how how we can find how I personally can find like um, like friends that can push me to be better, you know? Because uh, I would always ask somebody to um, to like come with me and to learn more more things, but at the end of the day, they always like cancel on me. I you totally know? understand. Well, look, I, I'm trying to understand the question, so I'm going to answer it a couple different ways. I don't know if it'll be helpful, but I'll try. Um, Go ahead. Number one, I can tell you from my party promoter days, 90% of the people that were in the club with me 10 years ago are still there. Um, so, you know, when you're talking about Friday night bars and this, that, and the other, like, no, no life has been changed on Friday night drinking. Um, you know, it, it, that, if you're y- young and ambitious, you know, it's, it's good to live life and have fun, but, you know, I wouldn't worry about that as, like, the letdown and anything that's going to stop you. Um, so just disregard that because those people aren't going to be grinding like you. Um, as far as like finding like-minded people, I don't know Mm -hmm. your personality well enough to see who you're going to gel with. What I can tell you is I would do research on larger companies that you admire in your space. You know, look at, look at these companies that have taken, find people who took, you know, contracting companies and built them into larger real estate holdings and people who ended up going from contracting houses to you know building out commercial real estate and different things like uh there there are people who literally started off in that business and then ended up owning you know huge huge amount of real estate themselves and building very big businesses and sometimes they're you know doing that in different ways so what i would say is start doing those research find those people create mentors and they might introduce you to someone else your age and say, hey, someone else called me. There's another like-minded person you should meet. I remember years ago, I went and met someone at a record label and he said, there's someone you should meet and his name's Adam Granite. He's a young guy. He's become like a GM over here. And now Adam and I have stayed friends all this time and Adam is now the new, you know, he's one of the top international guys at Universal Music and we work hand in hand and we've had a friendship since I was 19 years old. Um, so can I, can I ask a quick question, Jeffers? Uh, are you looking for these friends because you because you want to get value out of them in the business world, or because you want some people to hang out with on a Saturday night who who are, who are pushing? Oh, like, uh, and I think both matter. It, I'm just it, curious what you're looking for. Yeah, um, because I just want 
you know, like somebody to, to be there to ha- like help me as well, like if I have any questions. So basically, yeah, that, um, honestly, the reason I asked you and even the way you answered, I was getting that vibe. Like, I'm wondering if there's a very big difference between finding mentors and finding friends who are ambitious. So I would say Tinder or Bumble. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> but do you see what I mean? Like, like I think you might yeah. be asking for mentorship, not friendship, which is very okay. I'm just, I got that sense. Okay. And I, that's what, is that true or not? That's true. Okay, so, so to me, couple things, and then I wanna move on. You're 18, so the biggest fear I have, even in the series of questions and energy, is I promise you one thing Scooter and I will agree on is, Patience matters, man, yeah. this is a run marathon. We ate so much fucking shit. Like I just, it's so, not frustrating, because I want everybody to mm-hmm. win, but the amount of people that are gonna lose that thought it happened overnight for us without understanding the sheer amount of out. One thing I also know about Scooter, and I'm sure this is how he was, because I know him this, these days, I'm sure this is, we, it was even more because we were both younger for that reason, like sheer hours of output, I'm like 84. Mm-hmm. I'm look, I, I mean, look, I'll speak to that and, and, you, and Gary just triggered something in me. So I still remember vividly going home in my 20s and my dad saying, I want to talk to you. I think that you're, you know, working too hard. You're missing out on stuff. And I looked at it and I said, Dad, I'm trying to do something no one's ever done before. You know, so I'm, I'm mm-hmm. not in that mode of joy yet. I'm in the mode of grind. And I had to make certain sacrifices to get to where I was. That being said, when Gary was talking, I was also thinking about, you know, there's this big misconception about success because of stories like Gary, stories like mine, story like Mark Zuckerberg, and people think it just happens at you know a young age and, and it goes for you in your 30s. And, and the truth is the average entrepreneur doesn't even find the business that makes them successful till they're 39 years old. And I just read another article that got put out that the average entrepreneur who has a successful business in tech is 47 when they start. So there's this misconception, mm-hmm. it's all these young people and it's just not the truth. And don't forget, brother, the other thing that I'm scared shitless of is it's been a decade of good economy. So you've got all these Instagram entrepreneurs that are gonna get blown the fuck out when the economy hits the fan and people are over leveraged, trying to act like tough guys and gals, and they're gonna lose. And so like, there's so many layers to this. Your biggest advantage- Is your 18. Bingo. Like, I'm scared to, I'm so curious. I say this a lot, Scooter, and take life, take like, you have such a great family thing going on, like, professionally. Would you trade everything you've got right now to be 18 again? To have knowing, all that time? Knowing what I know? I'll give you 10%. Just for the sake of this game, you get to take 10% of your knowledge and you get to be 18 starting from zero. Would you take it professionally? Okay, let me just preface it by saying I would not trade my life to go I back know. to 18 ever because I now know my children exist. I know, and I, I know. Would never Notice how I hedged it and okay. said your family life, take that out. Move Business. that out. Business. Yeah, yeah, I go back. Of course you would. Yeah, I go back. And this is why all these 18 year olds, 22 year olds, 24 year olds, I'm like. Dude, I'd kill the game with 10%. 1%. Kill the game. Scooter, 1%. Yeah, kill the Being game. Being you? Yeah. 1%? I'll, let me back. Give me 1%. Plus, my metabolism, crazy. Yeah. I can eat whatever I want. Jeffrey, listen, you need to be patient, brother, and you need to bring value yeah. to mentors. People cold email and DM Scooter and I 24 7, 365, and they're offering to take us out to lunch or drive us from the airport. It's a ludicrous <laughs> trade. It's like laughable. You need to bring value. I talk a lot about people eventually working for people for free. If I want to be a music mogul, I swear, I'll say it this way, because you got, the team here has made a clip for me to post on Instagram of where I say eventually people are gonna pay me $200,000 to work for me, and I'm not posting it because it's too douchey in its framework, but I'll say this, mm-hmm. if my 19 year old best friend, if my best friend, you know, one of my best friends from college already has like an 18 year old, you know, he just, he, they had a baby early. If that kid hit me up right now and said, Gary Vee, I'm desperate to be a music mogul. I would literally tell him to hit up his dad, Glenn, and pay Scooter to work as an intern for free for him. I'm being dead serious. Way, you, know, you know what's funny about you saying mm-hmm. that? It's, and, and uh, it's funny that you say that for two reasons. One, most. no, no, listen, it's funny you say that for two reasons. One, because I always tell people when I meet them, I was like, stop worrying about getting a job. Create so much value for yourself that they will not let you go. Correct. And then number two, just today, and I'm not going to tell the story because it's a personal thing. Um, I saw an opportunity to spend more time with someone I admire. And I know that the time, every time I spend time with them, I get knowledge that makes me better. 
Yep. And I said that I would literally, I was, I was like, Hey, I want to pay for this for us to go yeah. just because I knew I was going to get more time with that and person. That was super flattering to me when you offered. <laughs> <laughs> but this person was like, no, no, I'll pay. And I was like, no, it's on me because, and, and, and I was fighting it because I literally truly believe 100%. that every single minute I spend with someone a, who gives me that knowledge is the return is a tenfold every single time. In the same way that I tell so many of you that you need to find optimism and positivity because that's a me- mental framework. Some is wisdom some is financial information, cultural information. Listen to me, you, you're looking for mentors, you need to find people that have done, Scooter gave you a great variation of this, find other people that did what you wanted. If you wanna be a music mogul, you should work for free for Scooter Braun and beg him and pray, and Guy Osiri and Troy Carters and all these people that have done things, like it's super smart to bring value, like that's the person you want to be. What you see under the hood when you're closest to the sun is disproportionately valuable. It's disproportionately valuable. Cool, bro, thanks. I mean, that, like that is like, I'm so intrigued by this. I, I don't know what to say. Um, me neither, I'm yeah. good with that one. All right. Are we doing another phone call? No, I gotta get out of here. I gotta run to something. No, I wanna do got, one more, Gary. Okay, let's do it real Let's fast. do one more because I feel like like this next kid, I used, to, like, I used to like, might not be a kid. I used to be on, you know, on the, online and I felt like if I don't answer like the next kid, I miss out let's on like, the great one. Go. So I feel like this next kid might be special. I'm just feeling something. Who was the person you were looking at on YouTube, the person right before Justin? Oh, he was an artist. That Ak- <laughs> That's so amazing. He was an artist. Right he was, he was an artist that A- he was an artist that Akon had. I can't remember his name. He was an Hello, artist that Akon had. Brooke. Brooke, it's Gary Vaynerchuk. You're on the Ask Gary V Show with Scooter Braun. Hi. Oh my God. Um, Brooke, before crazy. you do anything, you need to thank Scooter this tremendously. I'm about to be late for something. <laughs> he pushed me because he has that kind of energy. You need to really thank Scooter for this moment. Scooter, hey. thank you so much. Um, this is it. So, uh, my name is Brooke Johnson. We'll sign I you. have applied for an internship with your company for several several years now since Brooke, I graduated. Brooke, this I is the greatest college. moment. Brooke, I am. You have made. My <laughs> fucking life. Brooke, good news. Yeah, you've you've, made no, my Brooke, day you don't right even now. know. You've got the job. It's done. You've got the job. <laughs> SB Projects, you're, you're locked in. It's done. It's done. I'm I will crying. do everything. I will cancel my life to make this happen, Brooke. You are an intern in for SB. It's done. Brooke, I'm telling you, it's done. Scooter, Congratu- I, I no, no, Brooke. To LA. Congra- say thank you. Congra- <laughs> congratulations, Brooke. This is so done. Brooke, Brooke, where do you live? Scooter, so I I drove I went to LA last week. Um, I bought a hundred dollar plane ticket just to go down there because I was I was like, hey, I'm gonna get some coffee with CEOs because no one's no one's calling. I live in Seattle, Washington, actually Puyallup, Washington. Um, <laughs> Keep going, Brooke. This is the moment um, of my life. So I I flew down to LA and I was like, I'm gonna get some coffee with CEOs because nobody nobody was biting on any of my applications that Love I was it. throwing in. Sony, yep. Live Nation, Keep going. nothing. Keep going. And so I got a few interviews, um, but when I was down there, I got pickpocketed, I got my phone stolen, I got in a really yes. bad car accident, Jesus. I was T-boned and thrown into an intersection. All right, Brooke, first of all, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you money for the rights to your story. I want this movie, keep going. Keep going, keep going. I had the biggest interview of my life the next day at 9 a.m. And I, who was it with? Um, it was with Adidas. It was, uh, Adidas. Okay, keep going. It, I signed an NDA, so I can't tell you much. But um, <laughs> it was a big, big, big job, and I. So, so they they interviewed me, blah blah. blah. Um, but I got an email last week. They're like, "Hey, we're moving our offices." So um, I was like, "Oh, great." Uh, I don't know what to do, and I want to work in LA. Uh, Brooke, I have a question um, for you. What do you want to do? I want to change the world. I understand that. But what in details, wanted? Brooke, don't blow your fucking shot here with this, some fucking ideology I, I, bullshit. Okay. Brooke, I do wanna, not ideology Brooke, your fucking life into the wrong Brooke, direction. Brooke, what kind of job were you I looking wanna for? Inspire, I'm looking for marketing. I want to inspire people to inspire themselves. Okay, to, Brooke, to hold on, on. Brooke, you go one Brooke. more ideology step and Scooter's going to kill <laughs> okay, you and okay, hang okay. up on you. Brooke, don't give me any Brooke. more 2019 <laughs> horse shit. Get real practical here right now. This is the moment of your life. You're going to watch this video every day for the rest of your life. And if you do one more ideological fucking theoretical bullshit thing here when he's looking for practicality, I'm going to punch you in the nose. Okay, Brooke, here, here's my question for you. You say yeah. marketing. What gives you experience in marketing? Anything? What gives me experience? Can you repeat that? What What, did what you kind do? of experience what, do you what, have? What was on the resume? Anything yet or nothing? I have a little bit of marketing experience. I was the president of the American Marketing Association at my university. I successfully got a seven thousand dollars through. Um, oh gosh. Don't worry, you're fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm still here, Brooke. 
I, through, like, I didn't sell anything. I just went to my Zumba okay. class, and, yep. and these women, I, I got these women on board with my, my ideas, and they were like, yeah, we'll, we'll give you some money. And so I walked out of the YMCA one day with $1,000, yes. and it's things like that. that okay, so I'm Brooke, here's my right question at. for you. Can I, just out of curiosity, give me your background, your parents. Like, what did they do? Um, my mom's a single mom. She, my, my dad's completely out of the picture. Um, so, Brooke, let me get this straight. You're a young lady who I assume was a single mom. Like, you, you're, you got student loans? Yes, I have a lot of student loans, yeah. So, so you, got, you got student loans. You're grinding. You're going to school. You're making things happen. You have a dream of marketing. You buy a $100 plane ticket and just show up in L.A. Somehow you got an interview. They've decided to move on. All the other people wouldn't meet with you. You got pickpocket, everything else. And <laughs> and then how did you find out about this tonight? You were just watching Gary's Instagram? What's yeah, it? one of my friends told me I needed to follow Gary V because he was like, hey, Brooke, like, so, get so, your so, head out of your butt and so, figure it out. <laughs> so, Brooke, here, here's my thing, right? You, you, okay, so I want to explain what happened. You, uh, Gary needs to go. And Gary, we just did a call with a guy and I just said, look, my whole life experience, it's always been that last one when I'm about to leave, like answer one more, that something very special happens. So we decided you were the one special. I said, Gary, one more. So that's why he was saying everything else. So, so what I'm saying to you is, I get in a lot of trouble with my staff when I meet people in the street and they ask for an internship and I say yes. I've literally- You are super pissed with me right now because no. I just did it. You no, know, listen, I, I am actually told I'm not allowed to do that anymore by my own company because I get in so much trouble for giving random, and usually they, they yeah. turn out to not always be Yeah, they're always shit, they're always yeah. shit. <laughs> but, oh no, I, I, I'm a good investment. No, no, no I know, no, but, no, but, but- Look, here's the thing. It's always and shit, by way, bro, it's, don't worry It's though. usually always shit, but it's worked out a couple times. Yeah, and one time fucking nets out, and guess what? That's why Scooter and I have fucking companies, not the fucking henchmen here in okay. the corner. Okay, so, <laughs> so here's what I'm gonna say to you, Brooke. Um, I, when you graduate, I already did. Yeah, I she's ready to fucking May. roll, Scooter. Okay, and, and you and you want to work for free? You said you just want an internship? Well, minimum wage would be terrible. I will work for free. I'm I'm planning on moving down to Los Angeles within the week, regardless of if I get a job or not. And where, um, how, and how do you, what about money to live? How are you going to afford to live in L.A.? Um, I have a cousin who told me that I can Perfect. rent a room for $350. Fucking love you, Brooke. Cousin, yes. So in San Clarita. And so I was like, yep. okay, I'll take that up. I don't yep. know. I don't know what to Figure gonna, it out, Brooke. It's gonna leave and so eat okay. shit. I'm packing my fucking this shit. Weekend. Brooke, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get your information. I'm breaking my rule. This is not for any kid watching. I'm, you meet me in the street, I'm not breaking my rule again. Don't get it this twisted. It's never happening again. Okay. But what I'm gonna tell you is I follow like the universe has fixed my life plenty of times. I was telling Gary earlier, like when I don't really know, sometimes it shows it for me. You need a break. And I think sometimes in life, I was talking to Gary Brooke, about luck. Brooke, start fucking crying. Brooke, 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 I want to explain this. I was, talking to, I was talking to Gary about luck earlier. And what I mean by that is, and I never got to explain it. I have friends who I know are as smart as me and have worked as hard as me and have not had the success in life because along the way, they just didn't get the breaks. And I always tell them, yeah. keep going. The breaks are waiting for you. The breaks are waiting for you. Sometimes it happens earlier in life. I got lucky it happened earlier in life. And sometimes it happens later in life. And sometimes I, it happens on the Ask Gary V show. And I think tonight it happened on the Ask Gary V show. So I don't know what it will turn into, but you deserve a break. So I don't, I'm not giving you a job yet, but I'm gonna give you the internship. And what I'm gonna do is- unlike, We're gonna pay you minimum wage unlike, too, Brooke. But unlike the other interns, I'm gonna actually make sure that like you and I, you know, that I put you on a couple projects, you know, to make sure that I see what you can do on the marketing side. And that's why we and did Brooke, the extra phone Brooke, call. Brooke, even better, it gets way better because I'm not letting fucking Scooter here out Oprah me. So on top of that, because you wanna do marketing, I'm flying you, I'm paying for all this shit. I'm flying you to New York, I'm putting you up in a hotel for a week and or at D-Rock's house. I haven't figured it out yet. And you're gonna work here at Vayner for a week. But what if I wanna hire you? No, 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 really? stick with me real quick. You're gonna, you're gonna work with my team for a week. We're gonna give you all the secret sauce so that when you go back to Scooter's Land, you're not just doing some YMCA hustle, you're doing 2019 perfect marketing. You're coming here for a week, we're gonna teach you as much as we can in a week. You're gonna work 19 hours a day like our crew does. Then you're gonna go back to Scooter's World and eventually be the CMO of fucking Scooter Braun Projects. So Brooke, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna figure this out. The other thing, the one thing I want you to promise me though if we do this, you gotta only promise me one thing. I'm all yours. Okay, I I just want you to call your mom when you're done and thank her because I, I'm raising kids with two parents and it's hard already 
And the fact that your mom has been a single mom and raised someone with this kind of ambition, that's a beautiful thing. And she probably put a lot of sacrifices and you don't even know. So I just want you to call her and say, thank you. I caught a break tonight. I don't know what it'll turn into, but I'm glad I could hear you need a break. So you got your break tonight. And Brooke, and I got one request. Are you a Seahawks fan? Uh, Well, I I know you guys are Jets fans, but yeah, go go Hawks fans. Okay, you now have to become a New York Jets fan, like right now. (laughs) Like, there's nothing else to say. Like, uh, Russell is a great guy. Like, Pete Carroll, former Jets coach. But right here, right now, you have to tell the world you are now a New York Jets fan. Okay. Would you guys trade your Would you guys trade your football team for this? Uh, I like? would not. But good news, I can fucking do anything with myself. Well, hold on, You're looking, you know what? Hold I would on, not. Hold on. This is. I let me tell you. Hold on. I don't want you to answer Bro- this, Brooke. I need to say something now. I really like you. The problem with football fans, and this is why as a Jets fan, I respect Eagles fans and other people, yeah. is that there are all these people that are only fans when they're winning. They're yeah. fair weather fans. Yeah. Jets fans, we've yeah. been hearing about Joe Willie yeah. Namath our entire yeah. lives. Yeah. We're real fans. Yes. We fight. The fact that she just got this yes. break and still had the guts that to was tell guts. us, I'm staying a Seahawks fan. Yep. Brooke, I fuck with you. Brooke, on the other hand, I don't. So I'm taking everything. I'm taking everything I offered off the table. No New York, no D Rock House, no flight here. You have to go straight to fucking Scooter's World, and you can knock on YMCA doors and fucking sell some albums. I don't fucking know. I'm out. Scooter's okay, in. I'll, I'll, I'll fly into your office. Don't worry, I'll figure out a way. I'm kidding. Listen, I'm super excited. Uh, this is why Andy, we took the last Andy's call. gonna this is send exactly you. The kind of Andy's stuff gonna I send know. you a message right now to your Facebook with my email. We'll get we'll get set up. We'll forward it to you Scooter's wanna Land. Week, you want to do a week here? And She's then, gonna come here for a week. We're gonna train and her gonna to be her. to be. Uh, yeah, we'll put her up for a week and train her, and then we'll send her back to you with more talent. And then I'm gonna pay for the flight to LA from there, and then you move into your cousins, and we'll start the internship. Oh my god! And Brooke, coffee. And Brooke, yes. I'm gonna buy you a four thousand dollar car. <laughs> What are you, you really? I'm being dead serious. She can't get to your fucking office without a car. I don't know what 4,000 gets you in car world these days. You wanna split it? Done. Brooke, we're buying you a $4,000 car. Yo, by, by the way, my oh. office is gonna be really pissed that I'm just giving out cars and they've been working there. Listen. They're gonna be like, Brooke, what the fuck? Brooke, you, I'm gonna hang up now because I'm about to buy you a house. <laughs> and, so, and so, congratulations, Brooke. Fucking Scooter made your life. By the way, it's also Uber and Lyft, you know. You yeah, I know, but let's get her, I want her to drive a $4,000 car because there's a little bit of that ghetto magic that I'm interested in. You, you, I want the hustle and grind. Do you get to choose it? Yeah, it's green, but not that teal bullshit up in Seattle. It's Hunter Green. <laughs> Brooke, we're buying you a fucking car. You've got a job. You work for Scooter. Like, you're fucking coming and getting fucking, like, IP from Vayner. Like, shit's good tonight. Oh, my God. Are you crying, <laughs> laughing, or throwing up? I'm doing smile crying. Awesome. We love you, Brooke. Scooter, you're amazing. Take care, See ya. Right. That's why we do the extra phone call. I get it. I'm not even doing a question today. That was the fucking ending of the day. I love you, brother. Love you too, buddy. Always. I'll see yeah. you soon. That was amazing. See ya. Bye. Take care. 